Hello, I'm Necropolo. Last summer I made a video about a freshly made, better powered guitar pedal board. In the last uh, 12 months I used it quite extensively. This band called Diabolus in Musica was on the road during the whole summer last year. Then an album became released so we started a supporting tour, that means 50 plus gigs where this pedal board was used. Depending on the venue, we play somewhere between 40 minutes and 90 minutes. Considering the pedal board runtime, I think it doubles because of sound checks and rehearsals. And sometimes, for example, during a theater play, it was running, charging, running, charging during the whole day. So, all in all, if I had to make a rough estimation, I think it was on for 500 hours, approximately. So finally, what was my experience with it? First, let's see the positive things. Above all, it's bloody practical. You just unpack, turn it on and you are ready to go, compared to my other very compact pedal boards. They are very quick, because uh, installing them on a venue takes only a minute or so, but this battery-powered one literally takes seconds only. About the juice, it's capable of providing power for three short gigs or two long gigs, including sound checks. It means approximately four hours of stable runtime. Maybe it can go up to five hours, but I have never taken the risk. Of course, it doesn't mean that all the pedals on the board are on. There are two pedals that are, anyway. The Digitech Looper and Wave Player is on, because it provides the background tracks. You know, we don't have a drummer because of logistics. <laughs> so, the other one turned on all the time is this little Joyo reverb. All the others are just on momentarily. These are all the pedals, so they are not very efficient, especially the TU2 tuner by Boss. It's a resource hug. It's absolutely capable of eating through a fresh 9 volt battery in 8 gigs. And it's terrible, honestly. But I have this one for over 20 years and it's a leftover from previous pedal boards. So it's an old car with issues. Not ideal for a battery powered pedal board, but on the other hand, it's very reliable. And I didn't have to buy a new one, at least. So back to the battery, it's capable of providing four hours of runtime when two pedals are permanently on. After one year of extensive use, the battery didn't become noticeably worn. As far as I can observe, it works just like on day one. So did I notice any reliability issues? Nope, it's completely dependable. Would I recommend such a configuration? Absolutely, yes. If you want a pedal board that is gig ready in two seconds and it's independent from the in-house power system, then it's for you. However, there are some things that you must consider. These lithium-ion batteries are okay, but not the best. It means they will charge very slowly. So the 8 hours of recharge time that is mentioned in the instructions is not a joke, actually. You will need a quite careful management of recharging and using time. It can be tricky when you are on a long trip, so something like, okay, it's low on power, so I will charge it before the gig. Well, it doesn't work. You will have to charge it the night before. If you think, okay, I have a USB charger, so I will plug it in when I play. Well, I tried it during the theater play, and it doesn't work for one specific reason. Instead of a battery, it will take the complete load from the charger. It means some extreme heat. I guess those guys are not designed for taking, I don't know, 300, 500 milliamperes constantly. So they can heat up until meltdown. It can be very problematic on summer festival stages. So don't plug it in when you use the pedal board. Don't charge it. Only when it's off. Because otherwise you will potentially burn it. The second reason why I don't recommend to plug it in when you use the board is that a power supply can 
add a substantial amount of noise for some reason I don't know. It's not always this way, but uh, in some places I guess the grinding of the power system is terrible. Okay, that's about charging. The next thing to consider, if the battery is not charged up to a level it will not power up at all, not even if you plug in a USB charger. So if it seems to be dead, don't worry, it's just not charged up to, I don't know, 20% or something. The other strange thing that I noticed is depending on the in-house power and grounding system, using a battery-powered pedal board may introduce some strange noise into your signal. If you have ever used a simple stunbox with a 9V battery, then this thing is not new for you. It's not about your gear, it's about the fucked up wiring of the actual stage. Well, apart from using a DI box and trying to break the loop with the ground lift switch, unfortunately you can do nothing about it. What else? What else? Oh yeah. If you use a Stunbox that's a little tiny computer, just like my Digitech Gemman XT, occasionally, for some reason I don't know, this unit doesn't boot up properly. I've used this pedal for years with a power supply and it never happened before. If I had to guess, I think it needs the full power right at the start. And I guess a battery has a sort of ramp up when you turn it on. It doesn't provide the full capacity, only after a while. But that's all. So summing it up quickly. Did this battery powered pedal board work for me? Yes. It's bloody practical and quick. Is it reliable? Yes. Would I recommend using a battery powered pedal board? Yes. But you must consider a couple of things. 1. Don't use stoneboxes with very high power consumption. 2. Even if you use green stoneboxes, then still don't use too many of them. 3. Always keep an eye on recharge management. There are different pedal board batteries on the market, and maybe they are different from my Rockboard Pro Power LTXL. Well, what a name. Anyway. The 8 hours of recharge time is not a joke in the user's manual. 4. Charge the battery only when the board is off, otherwise you may burn out the charger. 5. Always use a DI box. 6. Some stages have a quite fucked up power system, so don't be surprised if you still have some noise. 7. If you use a stunbox that includes a tiny computer, maybe it doesn't boot up properly all the time. 8. Because of the previous one, always do a complete sound check. Turn your stunboxes on and off, check if they are function well. Take it for granted only after being tested. Well, it's true for all your stage equipment. Always do a complete system check, even if you think that you are using the most reliable and most robust audio system in the world. So, that's all for today. Necropolo out. See you somewhere in time.